What's up guys, Tia and Andy here, and today we're bringing you a complete camping checklist. This is not a checklist for being as bare minimum as possible. This is for your campsite or front country camping and where you wanna be as comfortable as possible in the great outdoors. So let's dive right in. Hey, you, do you like our content? If you do, hit that subscribe button, give us a big thumbs up, and hit the post notification bell to get notified of all of our future videos. You know you want to. On our glamping checklist, there are four broad categories. Category number one is where we sleep. So let's kick it off with your tent. <laughs> this is actually a smaller tent. We're testing this out. It is new. It's a three-person tent and it's also a pop-up tent. You can check out that video over there for the tent that we usually use if we want a lot of space. Uh, a little difference between this one is that um, it's a pop-up tent so you don't need to stake it down, although we do still recommend bringing stakes. It just props up the tent a lot nicer and uh, makes sure it also repels rain a lot better, so bring some stakes. Now, once you have your tent up, you're gonna need somewhere to sleep. But before we talk about the cozy stuff, you want probably a little bit of padding on the ground so you're not sleeping on the rocks and the bumps and the, you know, all the things that hurt you. So you've actually got a couple of options. What we use is just these very basic mats. They're almost like yoga mats, but they're specifically for camping and they're nice foam. So we usually lay these down before we put our sleeping bags on here. If this does not meet your needs, you do have other options. You can use those really thin blow up kind of pads. You could go all the way to getting a blow up mattress or you can even use a cot. Following that, you would want something to keep you warm. So Tia, let's bring out our new sleeping bags. These are our, our, our new sleeping bags. They are from Coleman. It's good till un, uh, I think zero degrees Celsius. So I think we're gonna be pretty cozy in them. Um, we usually use a quilt, which is uh, also another option, but we decided to switch it up and try out sleeping bags instead. Now, if you're worried that you are going to get cold, you can still bring additional blankets or quilts. And then along with that, you're gonna wanna have a pillow to put your head on. That brings us to category number two, which is all of your cooking gear. Now for us, this is usually our biggest portion of the list because- We like to eat. <laughs> we, we do like to eat, and you'd also be surprised how many things you actually use when you cook food. So to start, we want our items that we're actually going to be cooking with. Sometimes you might be cooking on the campfire itself. You can flip over the grate, have it over a nice open fire, but how are you gonna get that fire started? So we usually bring a propane tank with our torch here so that we can get the fire going. Now, we usually combine this also with a little bit of fire starter, either the liquid one or the little briquettes, and that way we can get the fire going easily without having to worry, especially if it's rained that day. Okay, that's great and all, but what if I wanna eat like right now? Okay, well, if you don't wanna get a fire going, your other option is to use a camping stove. So this is our camping stove. It is a butane stove, which means we do have to also bring butane with us. But this is what it looks like. And it is super quick, super easy to get all of your food cooked and ready and going right away if you can't wait for that fire. This is all you need for many, many hours of burning. Um, we usually only bring one. Uh, that we expect to use so bring two just in case but this is all you need if you uh, you're in a pinch okay now we have our heat source we need something to put the food in and this is where we'll bring not one not two but three pots and pans <laughs> <laughs> um, you don't need this many, you really can get along with just any old pan, uh, but we will recommend a wok. It's good for over the campfire, it's good for boiling water, and you can also put it on the stove, so it's really a one-size-fits-all. We just go way overboard with our cooking. 
cooking stuff. <laughs> now, speaking of over the campfire, we learned this from trial and error because we actually forgot this on one of our camping trips. When you go and you put a burger on the grate of the fire, don't forget that you're going to need something to actually flip it with and take it off. Oh yeah. Otherwise, <laughs> it's just going to sit there and burn unless you want to burn your hands. So we actually have two items that we bring with us. We have really long tongs, and this is so that you don't burn your hands uh, as you get close to the fire. We also had a, a flipper that's this, like, the, like this, that's really, really long. We unfortunately broke it on our last trip and haven't replaced it. So instead, we bring oven mitts, <laughs> right? This will keep your hands uh, nice and safe from the oven. You'll also do the same for, whoa, <laughs> for you in the campfire. So really good things to have. All right, so here is a little tip. Tin foil. Tin foil. <laughs> Bring some tin foil with you. I, we just stick a whole entire roll in there because this stuff is so useful. You can use it to put food on, to cook food in, and just about anything. Uh, another thing that tin foil is great for, if the grills of the uh, campfire is really dirty, we just put this on top and uh, poke some holes in it. Last but not least, we also wrap potatoes in this and put in the embers. Then you'll have nice baked potatoes to eat in the morning. You can also cover your, your pot or your pan to make amazing campfire nachos. Ooh, yes. This brings us to the last portion of our kitchen stuff. Once you cook your food, you're gonna need something to eat it off of. So don't forget to bring plates. We actually have uh, some plastic reusable ones. Uh, these are brand new actually. We've replaced our previous ones. And we also bring a good amount of cutlery. Uh, this here is just forks and spoons. And then we usually pick out some of our better knives that we'll be able to cut through all of the food that we need to deal with. Right. And lastly, we bring some skewers along. These are really for funsies. Uh, uh, we like to roast um, hot dogs on these. They don't. They are definitely not essential. It's just kind of fun to watch hot dogs blister in the fire. Or if you like marshmallows, you can roast some marshmallows, make some s'mores. No, no, thank you. Just hot <laughs> Other things to bring along is a scrub for the barbecue grate a scrub for your dishes or a sponge, soap, and last but not least, something to drink out of. A lot of people for, uh, forget about this because they think they're just gonna drink out of water bottles and uh, or alcohol containers. However, we really like this. It's multi-purpose, uh, uh, like keeps things cold, keep things warm, just really great all around. We are using our Nyet bottles this year. Super excited. I think you'll uh, do really good on our camping trip. And another two items before we forget them, Ziploc bags are super handy. If you cook food and you don't have extra containers to put it in or you don't have enough space, Ziploc bags are super, super handy. You can fit them into the cricks and cracks of uh, the space in your cooler. And that means you would also need to bring a cooler to put your food into along with some ice. Category is number three. <laughs> Category number three is going to be your essentials. These are things that you'll want to have. Again, this is for more so cozy, comfortable camping, not backcountry camping. But the first two things you'll want to bring is a hammer or a mallet and a hatchet. Andy, tell us why we need these. You need this to drive your tent poles in. I highly recommend a mallet, not a hammer like this. So something that's made of rubber. I still need to pick one up. And also a hatchet. Um, especially in Ontario, the parks are very restrictive on what wood you use. This is because there's beetle infestations that, uh, that happens. So they don't want you to carry wood from region to region. Now, the problem is, the wood that you usually can buy is in gigantic chunks. They don't start very well, they smolder. So you wanna chop some up into little pieces and a hatchet is just a tool for the job. Next on the list of essentials is going to be your sprays and uh, creams. So sunscreen, very, very important. You're gonna be outdoors. The sun will probably be out and you don't wanna get sunburnt. Second of all, if you're camping, especially here in Ontario, you will probably be near bugs. So you might want some bug spray to help with the mosquitoes so you don't get eaten alive. 
You do have a couple of options there. We're choosing to go with the spray, uh, the spray type, but you have those like mosquito, mosquito coils. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, various other types of uh, defenses against insects. Pick one up, you won't regret it. Next, because we're camping during the pandemic, during COVID, we're bringing a couple of extra items with us that, you know what, we might actually start to bring these regularly anyway. So the first thing we're bringing is Lysol spray. And the reason for that is because we're going to be in a provincial park, the amenities are going to be shared. So we'll have our own campsite to ourselves, and we can mostly stay away from people, but all of the washrooms are communal space. So we're gonna be bringing Lysol spray with us so that we can spray door handles and doorknobs before we touch them. We're also bringing Lysol wipes with us, again, just for that extra protection where we can wipe things down if we need to. Or even just our own hands instead of having to use the uh, alcohol. We'll use the Lysol wipes. It's, it just makes things a little bit easier. A few more items on the list. Um, the first two things we want to mention are for you to see. A lantern or a flashlight. We're using a headlamp this time, it's something that we picked up, but essentially it's a flashlight. Now, we recommend bringing both. This is great for walking around, going to the washroom at night. This is great if you're trying to play a card game or something. Yeah. We have this one that's solar powered, has a little handle, and that you pull up. It's really great from hanging from inside the tent. Highly recommend something like this. The last items on the essentials list include kind of a mishmash of things. First of all, we're gonna say bring a first aid kit. This is really important in case you get hurt during your trip so that you're not running to emergency rooms or running to um, you know, a Walmart to try and find bandages and stuff like that. If you have the first aid kit with you, you'll be ready to go. We also recommend bringing a tarp and rope in case it rains. We actually had one year where we forgot our tarp and it was pouring rain and unfortunately oh. there was so much water that our rain screen on our tent could not keep up. So we always bring actually a couple of tarps with us. We usually put one tarp underneath our tent and if it starts to rain, we put one tarp over our tent. And the rope is not just for securing the tarp down. It also serves great when you tie it up across two trees as a, uh, a drying, drying line. So multi-uses. You can never go without rope. And if you are venturing out away from your campsite during the day, it's always recommended to bring a pocket knife with you in case you get into any awkward situations where you would need those items. Uh, if you're not venturing off your campsite, we don't actually usually bring a pocket knife because we have knives with us, but it's always a good thing to know. This brings us to our last category, which is category number four. And this is gonna be your personal items. Things like clothes and toiletries. You'll definitely want some of those with you because you don't wanna be in the same clothes that you wore on the way to the campsite. Otherwise, you might be a little bit stinky and people won't wanna be near you. <laughs> Just a little. <laughs> Okay, so we're not gonna tell you exactly what to wear, but there are a few categories of items to be aware of. One, you want something comfortable to sleep in, some sort of sweater. I have this uh, long sleeve shirt that keeps me really comfortable. You'll want outerwear, beach clothes, uh, like a bathing suit, bathing and towel. Suit. Yeah. And last but not least, something to keep dry, so like a rain jacket. And can you think of anything else? Yeah, you should also think about your footwear and what activities you're going to be doing. When we're around our campsite, we like to just wear flip-flops. And when we go to the beach, we like to wear flip-flops. However, we also like to do some hiking or some biking while we're camping. And in those cases, we'll also bring our running shoes and socks with us. Good point. A couple of other optional personal items that you can bring include, um, you know, things for transportation. If you really like to bike, you could bring your bikes with you. Um, if you like to have some entertainment, uh, there's some stuff that you can bring with you for that too. We usually bring a deck of cards with us. We sometimes pack ladder ball um, or you know some of those just fun uh, partner camping type games. We'll pack those with us as well. So any form of entertainment that you're gonna wanna do while you're camping, make sure you also include that on your camping checklist. A couple of more things for my friends out there who are as blind as I am. Not only should you have your normal glasses and sunglasses, also bring some spares. So I personally uh, always bring a couple of pairs of uh, contact lenses. They're daily dis disposables that they throw away. 
yeah, you never know when you're gonna fall down and need some new glasses. It really sucks when you can see out of half of your <laughs> eyeballs. <laughs> so <laughs> that is that is something to uh, to keep aware of. Another option you can do is bring a hat with you. Totally optional if you like to keep the sun out of your eyes while you're doing stuff, uh, definitely a good option. Otherwise, you don't have to bring it. With personal items, it really comes down to what you need personally. So all of these are just our suggestions. If you have any other items that you, know, you would need to bring with you, just make sure to include them on your camping checklist. We just went through a whole bunch of items and let's be real, you probably didn't have a chance to write all of them down. But that's okay because we've actually compiled our whole camping checklist into a downloadable file just for you. So if you do want to access it, check it out. It's in the description below. Just click the link, download the file, and you'll be on your way. And of course, we forgot a few things. <laughs> we literally cannot go one camping trip without having to go through the list 10 times. <sighs> okay, so the first thing that we forgot is a kitchen tent. It says giant tent that we have uh, it keeps the water out and it's we just, more like a canopy a canopy yeah it, it provides some shade now along with that we also forgot to mention camping chairs if you want to sit near the campfire you might want to bring some camping chairs with you and last but not least we went through all of this cooking gear and never talked about where we chop this stuff so we have a um, cutting board inside our camping bucket ready to go all right i think that's it i think for real that's the end of the checklist if we did forget anything and you guys know of it put it in the comments below yep maybe it's already on our checklist because we keep forgetting everything <laughs>